Welcome back, and today we're going to go over significant figures or significant digits in chemistry. It is all that matters. Now, significant figures or significant digits are exact numbers. They are pure numbers, and they are not applicable to examples like 10 pennies or 30 students or one dozen or 100 percent. Significant figures always have to be a measured quantity. Significant digits must have a measurement, which means it has to have a numeric value and a unit. So examples of significant digits would include 15 centimeters, 12.5 inches, and 1.0 quarts. Now, significant digits have basic rules, and they apply again to only measured quantities, and they must always include units. And those units will always reflect the precision of the measuring device. And if we remember from the last video, we talked about the fact that precision is dependent upon the scale of the measuring device we're using. So for the device on the left, we can be precise to 0.1. But in the middle, we can only be precise to 1 and on the right we can only be precise to 10 because the space in between each of those lines we don't know an exact value so again when we're dealing with significant digits it's a measured quantity and it's based upon the scale of the tool we are using to measure it so when we are talking about significant digits and we are talking about measured quantities we are talking about things like length volume, mass, weight, density, those things that can be me measured by a device. So let's go over what makes units significant, what digits are significant. So here are the basic rules. Rule number one, all non-zero digits are significant. So if we have a value of 531, that contains three significant digits. 7318, 7318, has four significant digits, and the number four is one significant digit. In each of these cases, all the numbers are non-zero digits and therefore are significant. Now, zeros. Here's where significant digits get determined when we deal with the rules for the zeros. Since all non-zero digits are significant, that means the zeros are going to be significant in different ways. So first off, we're going to look at where is the placement of the zero. When the zero is between two non-zero digits, the zero is always significant. So for 101, 101, the zero is significant and you have three significant digits. For 98,705, the zero between the seven and the five is significant and you have five significant. A trailing zero, also known as a placeholder zero, is not significant. So in the number 10, the zero actually holds the place of the ones unit and moves the one into the tens unit. So the zero is a placeholder, also known as a trailing zero, so this only has one significant digit. For 1010, the one, the zero, and the one are all significant, and the blue zero is a placeholder and therefore is not significant. The zero between the ones follows the first rule for zeros, which is if the zero is between two non-zero digits, it is significant. So this value, 1,010, has three significant digits. For the number 10,000, all those zeros are placeholders, and therefore only the one is significant. So this is one significant digit. Now the trailing zero rule changes if you place a decimal after the zero. If you add a decimal after the zero, the zero becomes significant. So 10 decimal point has two significant digits, 1010, 
decimal point has four significant digits and 10,000 decimal point has five significant digits. Zeros after a decimal point are significant. So in this case, whenever they're to the right end of a decimal value, they are significant. So 10.0, three significant digits. 1,010.00, all the zeros are significant, six significant digits. Now, if the zero is a placeholder, therefore it is between the decimal and the non-zero digit, it is not significant. So in the case of 0 0.01, the zero in front of the decimal point does not count. The zero between the decimal point and the one is a placeholder moving the one into the hundredths place. Therefore, only the one is significant. 0 0.0011, the first zero is not significant the two zeros following the decimal point are placeholder zeros moving the one and the one into the thousandth and the ten thousandth place. So only the ones are significant, two significant digits. The zeros at the end of a decimal value, so after the significant digits, are significant. So 0 0.010, the 0, 0.0 are placeholders but the one zero are both significant, two significant digits. For letter C, 0 0.010010. The first two zeros, the blue ones, are placeholders, not significant. The one zero zero one, those two zeros are significant because they are between the ones. And the zero at the right end of the decimal is also significant. So this value has five significant digits. Non-zero digits before decimal point make all zeros significant. So if you have a non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point, any zeros after the decimal point become significant. So 1.00, three significant digits, 1.010, four significant digits, and 1.011010, has seven significant digits. So significant digits do not apply to counting numbers or exact numbers. So 47 people, that's a counting number. You're counting how many people, not significant. 63 cars entered the race. Again, a counting number, not significant. 10 pennies equals one dime. This is an exact value. It's not a measured value. So one dime and the 10 pennies are both exact numbers, and 12 apples equal a dozen. Again, an exact number, not significant. So let's test how you can do. How many significant digits are there in the following number? The answer is five. The 1, the 2, the 9, the 0, and the 2, all significant. The last two zeros are placeholders, not significant. Three significant digits. 0 0.000203. The, all the zeros on the left are placeholder zeros. The zero between the two and the three are, is significant because they are between non-zero digits. This has three significant digits. 0 0.0002030. The answer is four significant digits. The two, the zero, the three, and the zero. The first four zeros are all placeholders. Only two significant digits, just the one and the three. All the other zeros are non-significant zeros. They are all placeholders and therefore not significant.
seven significant digits. Now, how is this one different from the question before? The decimal point here makes all the zeros significant. They are no longer placeholders. They are measured quantities that we know the value of. Four significant digits. All four of these are significant. They are non-zero digits and therefore all are significant. How many zeros in the following number are significant? So this question is a little different. It's asking which zeros are significant. So the first four zeros are placeholders. The zero and the zero between the three and the two are significant because they are between non-zero digits. And the last zero of a decimal, the right end of a decimal, is always significant. So this has three significant zeros. So again, how many zeros in the following number are significant? So the answer to this is one. The five zeros on the right are all placeholders. Therefore, they are not significant. Only the zero between the three and the four is significant. So there is only one significant zero in this question. The digits one through nine are always significant. Is that true or false? Well, we know that is true. And all the zero, all zeros are always significant. Well, we know there are rules that make some zeros non-significant, therefore this question statement is false. So these are the rules for significant digits, and in the next video we'll talk about adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing based on these rules.